welcome back to another edition of Metal Bands Chronicles. And today we're going to do a classic review. You know, this album just celebrated its 30th birthday last month, released in November of 1990 on Century of Media Records, one of Century of Media's earliest releases. I'm talking about the debut album by Iced Earth. Just called Iced Earth, yes. You know, what can I say? I think this is an excellent debut. You know, right up watch, you got Gene Adam on vocals. You got John Schaefer, the main guy, on rhythm guitars. You got Randall Shaver on rhythm and lead guitars. You got Dave Abel on bass. And you got Mike McGill handling the drum duties, replacing Dave Seymour at the time on drums. So yeah, man, let's get right into the album. You know, you got eight tracks. I'd say roughly around 47 minutes long, you know. And I think overall it's a pretty damn good debut. Um, by the way, I should show this too. That's the North American version that came out in 1991. So yeah, this was actually released in Europe first. Recorded on an $8,000 budget. You know. Hey man, it is what it is. You know. So the production's very raw on this debut album. Yes, the production a lot of people don't like. I, I even think John Schaefer isn't a fan of the production. Me... I've lived with it for a long time. It doesn't bother me. I like the raw production on it, to be honest. You know, and pretty soon the re-issue of this album is coming with a new remix. So I'll definitely be getting that when it comes out. Anyway, so let's go on to the review. Opening up the album, you got the title track, Iced Earth to begin this. Right away, you'll notice... Out of all the Iced Earth albums, this one definitely begins differently. You know, it doesn't really have an epic, bombastic beginning, you know. So yeah, this is a bit different for an Iced Earth album, you know. Now, Gene Adam, let's talk about his vocals real quick. I noticed he has a really witchy vibe to his vocals. I think Podcast and Stone even pointed that out, too. You know, in their review of the debut Iced Earth album, or when they were interviewing Gene that, you know, Gene Adams has this very unique vocal style that's very witchy. He goes from high down to low. You know, it's pretty interesting. Now, I think his rough vocals kind of remind me of Paul Deano a little bit, you know. I can definitely hear some Deano influence in the vocals. You know, I just figured I'd point that out because it seems like when people review this album, they don't point that out. Or maybe they didn't pick up on it, but I picked up on it, you know. So Gene definitely has more of that thrash metal type of vocal delivery compared to future vocalists of the band, which had that more power metal rage to him, you know. Overall, I think this is a great opener, you know. It's a good heavy metal track, you know. This track also appears on the debut, Enter the Realm, while well, the first demo, Enter the Realm from 1989, you know, the demo version of... Iced Earth is on that. Anyways, moving on. Written on the Walls. Later titled Cast in Stone. You know, due to the fact that Gene Adam wrote the lyrics to Written on the Wall and they had to change the title of the track and the lyrics, I believe, in the track. You know, for the Cast in Stone, which appears on... Days of Purgatory from 1997, which was re-recorded with Matthew Barlow. But this track, holy cow. This is a great epic track, man. I really enjoy this track. I like the atmosphere of this track. I like the parts where it slows down and then... I like the part, too, where it kind of goes into this breakdown where there's like a really heavy Paul Muted guitar lick going on and these Hammond organs or organs going on in the background. I think that's actually really, really cool and unique. I think Gene sounds pretty damn good on this track. Um, Yeah, the riffing in this track's amazing. I mean, this is some of Ice Earth's best riffs, in my opinion, on Written on the Wall. 
So moving on, we go to Colors, another track that's on the Enter the Realm demo. Yes. <laughs> Colors, again, has awesome riffs. I love the beginning of it. You know, the beginning of it definitely reminds me of, like, early Metallica, you know. And notably, I think, you know, a lot of people always try to uh, come up with their own interpretation of what Iced Earth is. To me, Iced Earth is like a cross between early Metallica and Iron Maiden. That's the vibe I get from, you know, Iced Earth especially on these earlier albums. I think these first few albums definitely have more of a thrash metal bite to them when it comes to the rip styling. And that could be due to the fact that Randall saw, Randall Sauber, you know, being in the band because he was really huge into the thrash metal stuff. So I think that's why the rips are much thrashier on these early albums. But anyways, back to Colors, a great track. I really enjoy it. You know, and I just think it's another tremendous track on this album. So then we move on to Curse the Sky. Curse the Sky, kind of a deep cut on here, I guess. Um, I don't think I've ever seen this played live, like in video format. Maybe I have, I can't remember. I know early on, I'm sure they played this live quite a bit. But Curse the Sky, I think it's a very underrated track. It begins very melodic. Then it gets really thrashy. There's some really good thrashy riffs in this track, some big riffs in this track, and I really enjoy it. You know, again, I think Gene sounds phenomenal on this track. I like the chorus to this track. Eyes, lies, I curse the sky. Love that part. I just think it's a killer track. Great rhythm guitar work on this track. Again, very chunky, very crushing. You know, then again, very melodic too. Okay, moving on, we go to Life and Death. Again, another deep track on this album. Life and Death, you know, again, it begins very melodic. Kind of like the way Children of the Dan begins by Iron Maiden, I guess. If I were to compare it like stylistically, and then it picks up and gets really thrashy. I love the bell part in this track, too, man. It's, it's so freaking cool when it gets really heavy and thrashy. So, yeah, there's some excellent thrashy rips on this track again. Great melody. And Gene sounds pretty damn good on this track, too, in my opinion. Now, a lot of people don't like Gene Adams' vocals. I love them. I'm a fan of them. Then again, I've grown up with it since I've been into this band. You know for the last 21 years so moving on we go to solitude which is on the demo too i think i forgot to mention too um to curse the skies on the enter the realm demo also but anyways we got this little instrumental solitude which is also on the demo too enter the realm just a short little acoustic piece you know pretty beautiful stuff here you know, it definitely showcases John Schaefer's talent and what you're going to hear a lot of in the future when it comes to future Iced Earth albums. Overall, I think it's a very good track. Just, you know, for being a short little instrumental, it's pretty damn good. Now we go to Funeral, another instrumental. This track makes my hands hurt when I listen to this. The galloping triplet guitar rips in this track. Jeez. And being a guitar player myself, it's very complex to play that style of guitar. It's not easy. you got to really, really practice at it to know it. It's not easy. I mean, this is just amazing guitar work on this instrumental by uh, John Schaefer and Randall Schauber. Just amazing rips in this track. I think it's definitely an underrated instrumental on this track or on this album, you know, to me, this would be the Call of Cthulhu, To Live Is To Die, you know, of this debut Iced Earth album. So then we go to the final track, When The Night Falls, another great track. You know, for years, I'm going back and forth. Which version do I like better? Do I like Matt's version better? Do I like Gene's version better? I like them both. I think they're both phenomenal. 
I know a lot of people would tend to pick matte. B, I'm kind of in between. I like them both. Mm. Like Matt does a more melodic vocal line when it comes to the When the Night Fall part. Where Gene just goes, When the Night Falls! Which I really like that too. I think that's phenomenal, phenomenal and awesome in my opinion. Again, another epic track. You know, begins very melodic. Now this intro would be cut out of the track on Dates of Purgatory. It just goes into, you know, the heavy part. See, it's a weird intro, I guess, if you're not used to the debut album. If you hear this for the very first time, if you've already heard the Days of Purgatory version before this. So yeah, it's a little different. Overall, again, another track with tremendous rips. You know, I think Mike McGill does a stellar job on this debut album. You know, on the drums, I think his drumming's really good on this track. Um, the guitar work is just amazing. You know, Gene does some cool vocal lines, too. Overall, I think it's a great epic. You get some great harmony guitar leads in this track. I mean, it's just awesome. Now, the thing I noticed, too, about this debut Iced Earth album is the production sounds very wintry. Like, I just get this weird, cold, winter atmosphere when I listen to this album. And I think what it is... Why I get that atmosphere is because of that album cover. To me, the album cover definitely fits it. The the uh, North American version of it, that is. You know, because this was the version I owned first. So yeah, I think the production really has that wintry feel to it, which is really weird. And kind of gives you that vibe. Anyways, that's my review of the debut album by Iced Earth to celebrate the 30th anniversary. I'm ready for the reissue to come out. Definitely going to be getting it. Going to be getting it. And that's it for this review. Keep it metal.